Hello everyone and welcome back to Vlada's Place. I just made a first batch of moonshine for this year and since we have some extra grapes, I'm going to show you how moonshine making is done. So uh, literally just this morning I finished up cleaning all the equipment that we used for distilling the uh, grapes. So there was a big mess and it took me a long time to get everything clean. And while I was cleaning, I was um, swearing that I'm not gonna do this again. Um, and this afternoon, the very same day, my dear friend, Mr. Manzano, shows up with uh, buckets uh, of um, ripe organic grapes. Look how beautiful this is. And here I am, all over, doing it once again, because I can't let the good grapes go to waste. So here we go all over again. We're just gonna blame Perfecto for showing up with these beautiful grapes. And uh, I told them the only way I'm making moonshine again is if he helps me. Preparing grapes for fermentation takes a while, especially if you have to do it by hand. Those who do this professionally also have an equipment which makes this process much easier and much faster. So we're making brandy or moonshine with grapes, but you can use any uh, ripe, sweet, very sweet and ripe fruit to make, um, to make fermented and make brandy. I wish you could try these. I've been eating so many and I know they have too much sugar, but so hard to resist, so good. Last batch of grapes that we did, we didn't have time to, to uh, pick them or to squish them by hand. So I fermented them together with the stem. The um, brandy or the moonshine came out okay, but I know that it's much better if we can remove the stem and just have those uh, grapes uh, fermenting without stem. So there are three buckets here and um, there are three more in a car. So if we go and do this by hand, we're gonna be here till midnight. We're gonna try something different. And so Perfecto was suggesting that maybe, <laughs> I don't know, this is gonna be crazy, but maybe we will put the chair. Oh, this is already so heavy. We'll put the chair like this. And then we're gonna just try to Squish the grapes yeah. on this. Let's see. Ah! Oh, what? Okay, let's secure this. Mm -hmm. Huh? Right. I might not have any chairs left. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, the best way to come with the new inventions is to, through struggle sometimes. And so when you struggle, uh, your brain kicks in and you start to think of ways to uh, do things quicker and better. Oh, this is awesome. Now I'm officially a hillbilly. Growing up on country definitely has its benefits because um, you're always in a situation where you have to um, improvise uh, because you're not near the store sometimes or you just don't have time so you have to make uh, things happen and you have to use your mind to um, help you solve the problems as quickly and efficiently as possible okay this is awesome this is squishing the grapes it's uh, getting the juice out and it's removing the stem now by the time we're done with all of this, I'll have no palms left, but at least I'll get the job done. This little system worked really well. So that's just that we are removing the grapes from the stem, but also each individual grape is getting squished, which is exactly what we want. Still, this was taking a whole lot of time. Okay, as you said, the best <laughs> way to invention is through struggle sometimes, since we are literally gonna lose our, the palms of our hands. We're gonna try something new. Okay, perfecto. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> All right. Very good. 
almost three hours later and we were squishing the last batch. This definitely was an exhausting job, but uh, at the same time, it was a lot of fun. And this is one of the reasons I do silly things like this, because this is far better than sitting on my couch. I don't know if it's crazy or you were right. <laughs> That's good, huh? Mm -hmm. Looks really, really good. And we did good. Very good. You have some um, stuff that's almost like raisins in there. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. Our container was so full, it was ready to bust. So we had to make sure that we reinforce it and keep it together until fermentation was done. With this stage behind us, now all that's left to do is to wait for grapes to start fermenting. So this is the fourth day of fermentation. And as you can see, the majority of the grapes and grape skin have moved to the top so it's important to continue to mix in so that fer fermentation takes place evenly so to do this there is a, a very simple tool that a lot of winemakers use it's basically a stainless steel stick with a plate like um, attachment on the bottom and so you would just go and press on these grapes, grape skins, and they would go in. But since I don't have that, another uh, easy way to do this would be just using your hands. So, as you can see the difference in the color, the skins there are on the top, they oxidize and they turn brown, while the ones on the bottom are still nice and green. So, all we wanna do is to mix them all in, push the top layer to the bottom because all the juices are on the bottom now See, this looks really good and it smells phenomenal just phenomenal a healthy fermenting fruit and when I say healthy that means fermentation is taking place just as we want to and uh, if I had more time I would have mixed this more often, but we were away for three days. So that's why I had this thicker layer of the grape skins that turned darker. So if you are home and you can turn the skin more often, that would be better. Now, depending on the temperature and the sugar content of the fruit, uh, fermentation can be done anywhere between seven days to two weeks. I'm just gonna go squish a few more grapes that were not broken. And um, to explain to you, uh, it's hard to explain to you when is the really perfect time for the, you know, when per fermentation is done and you can start distilling. This is something that I, um, I do just by smell, uh, what I remember from my mom. And um, you, for those of you who have never done it, Again, um, I'll have to ask you to do some more research on your own. Perhaps there are instruments and gadgets that can help you with that. But for me, it's just the, um, the look and the smell of the fruit that tells me it's time to brew. So right now we are in our fourth day and the fruit, I can still smell the uh, real uh, smell of juice, of fruit, of grapes. And um, that means the fermentation is just starting and it's going to take probably another week or so before we are ready to distill. So I'll come back to show you again what this fruit looks in uh, maybe three or four days. And then uh, in the meantime, I'll continue to mix it and to rotate the grapes and make sure, make sure that they are submerged in the juices because that's how they ferment the best. 13 days into fermentation and we are ready to distill. What I'm doing here is simply removing the upper layer of skin. Now we no longer need the skin, so I'm just gonna remove it. So this way we will have uh, access to the, only the fluids below. Let's talk about the distiller. 
Uh, you can purchase a small distiller like mine online for anywhere between $150 to $250. One uh, disadvantage to these distillers Oops. is that they are very small. As a result, the distilling process takes quite a long time, which ultimately might work to your advantage because you can use this time to socialize with your neighbors, which uh, this is something that I do when we make moonshine. This is a perfect opportunity and a reason for me to gather my neighborhood around me and to spend time just sitting around and waiting for the first droplets of moonshine to come about. Like for my mom, alcohol is not a big thing in my life, yet I still like making moonshine. So one would wonder why. Well, there's actually a perfectly good explanation. First thing, I like growing fruits and vegetables. I like to see plants growing around me and bearing fruits. Now, once you have a fruit, you have to do something with it. And in this case, uh, the most natural thing to utilize grapes uh, in would be to make wine but I don't know how to make wine, so I turn them into moonshine. Another reason is I love preserving these old world scales. And in today's era where we are all so busy with internet and social media, I think putting breaks and turning around and doing something simple as this is good, not just for uh, our mind and our soul, but it's also good socially because this is a great opportunity to slow down, to reconnect uh, with yourself and to reconnect with nature and with people around so, you. Finally, when you come to this point of the stilling, uh, the things are very simple. You have a, a pot in which you will boil that mash that we made earlier and uh, um, Usually the temperature, boiling temperature is around 180, 180 something. And uh, obviously you're gonna need a fire, you're gonna need a pot, and the pot will need to have a, a copper pipe. And if you come, if you wanna come closer, uh, this is something that you can easily make yourself or you can buy something like this online. What's happening here, you have a steam coming and going through the pipe. It's going down through coil and it's getting chilled here or condensed and whatever uh, condenses actually turns into alcohol because the alcohol evaporates first. And so as the alcohol evaporates, the cold water will help condense it. And on this end here, you have moonshine or alcohol coming out. So it's actually so, so simple. And um, depending on the fruits that you use, depending on the hot fermentation process, the weather, temperature, and other, a lot of things, um, you're, you might brew a different uh, moonshine or different taste to your alcohol. But we are very lucky to get our hands on a very good grapes. Fermentation process went perfectly because the temperatures were in high 70s, so it was a slow fermentation and now we're just stilling and the alcohol that we're getting it's really really good so in this particular case we are um we have the undertone of raisins because the grapes were really ripe and sweet so the fragrance and the taste of this moonshine is raisiny and sweet it's very very good And it's also very strong. <laughs> Woo! The distilling continued for two days and we continued to host and invite guests. Bottom line is we had a lots of fun and we got some amazing moonshine. Now, if you ask me if this was worth it, I would instinctively say no, because a bottle of this kind of moonshine should cost $200. But then again, doing the things that we truly love and that make us happy is simply priceless. Thank you so much for watching and for spending time with me. My name is Vlada Vladik and I'm a founder of a charitable organization called Vlada Seeds of Life and a producer of a quality family program called Cooking and Kids. If you like videos like these, 
please subscribe and send us your likes. Till our next video, please take good care of yourself and those around you.